This is a talk called Hubert's Peak. No discussion of oil is complete without covering the man Hubert. Hubert was a petroleum engineer back in the 1950s, working in the United States. And Hubert went and looked at all the data coming off the continental U.S. production of oil, analyzed it, and said, it is going to peak in the 1950s or 1970s. So 20 years before the event, he predicted that U.S. oil production would reach a maximum. And it, we would never produce more oil on that day forward than in the 1970s. Now, what you have to know is that going all the way back to 1950 or 1850, Oil is discovered in Pennsylvania, and the U.S. takes off here in 1900 with the mass production of the internal combustion engine in the automobile. Now, in 1920, oil is discovered in East Texas, and it turns out that the pumping of oil during World War II, we were able to pump more oil than Germany, and that oil combined with fighting spirit and mass production helped us win the war. Germany actually had to go into Russia to get oil supplies. So up until 1970, the U.S. has been the Saudi Arabia of oil. We, we are, have been the big gorilla, the largest, um, the largest consumer of oil, and the first country to switch to an oil-based economy. And most people say that it's been the switch to an oil-based economy, natural resources, and the two oceans, which have been barriers to, to war. And so the U.S. has had this incredible run uh, of, of, a, of advancements in economic power. And so now here in 1970, oil production has dropped, and in the 80s we've had a spike I don't know if I've drawn that exactly. We've drawn, in the 80s we had a spike in which Alaskan oil has come online, but Hubert was still true. He only knew about cotton in the U.S., but Hubert was still correct. The U.S. production has never exceeded what it did in 1970. And now, right now, the U.S. is producing 10 million barrels a day, but we're consuming 20 million. So we're importing 10 million barrels a day, and those imports are coming from Venezuela, Mexico, Canada, and Saudi Arabia. We are very, very dependent on Saudi oil. Okay, so this is Hubert's Peak. This here is Hubert's Peak. Now, that's at a U.S. level. What's come up is that his followers have taken the world production with a blip in 1973 and are trying to predict when Hubert's Peak occurs at a world level. This is the discussion of all the petroleum engineers, all the mechanics, everybody that's involved wants to figure out when oil production in the world peaks. So one of the challenges we have is unlike when Hubert was doing his prediction, he had exact data off the wells in the U.S., Data off the international market is, is, is crazy because countries are inflating their production numbers so that they, their, their reserves so that they can increase their production as members of OPEC. Saudi Arabia is absolutely quiet about its production or its resources, its reserves uh, capacity. Um, it, it, it's virtually impossible for people to guess when the peak is going to occur. So my kids uh, are really involved in, in what I'm teaching, and they say, you know, Dad, what, what do you think? What's going to happen? And I think that oil production, I tell them, I'm not, I don't really have a crystal ball, but let's just say that oil production occurs in 2020. So here we are in 2008, and in 12 years, uh, the 13-year-olds, the teenagers that I'm talking to, will be graduating from college, and they will be coming into a world in which oil production will be at a max, and people will be aware of this 
of this limit and we will start going down the curve. Now, in the beginning of the where the supply is dropping and the demand is adjusting to meet supply, we will have what I call the Prius effect. Now, it isn't the fact that people will buy enough Priuses, but what will happen is people will get green. Back in 73, everyone switched to green and oil production, oil consumption actually did drop. So maybe for about 10 years, we will see that demand will follow supply. But when that, when we've gone low enough and conservation doesn't work enough, work sufficiently, then we will get into the point where the rich companies or countries start buying their way through the crisis. So a country like the U.S. with more dollars per oil will be able to muscle out the other the other countries. Now this is not going to be pleasant. On top of this, we will have shortages in we will have problems with with shipping which will mess up our just-in-time manufacturing systems. We will have problems getting oil for the thousands and thousands of products that come for it, mainly plastic or nominally plastics, and just the cost of of energy is going to go up. And what I believe is that Wall Street analysts will look forward in earnings and see pretty much every single company going down, 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 and their balance sheet's getting worse and worse. So somewhere out here, maybe in 2040, the stock market just gives out. And you know, we have a, a 10x collapse of the market, and 90% of the valuation of the world disappears. Well, this is when people are predicting resource wars. And I don't really want to get into that because what I'm doing here is I'm saying I look at my sons and say from here to here you'll live in here. You'll live, well, maybe a little longer, but you will live in this period from this peak period of oil into this tough time, conservation, tough time, and then from then on probably resource wars. My my grandson is going to have it very tough. I have it very easy. My dad had it pretty easy. And my grandfather had it pretty rough. He was a farmer in Wisconsin, and he actually farmed with horses. So I know in five generations, we, society, will go through entire every single drop of oil, which is the most critical hydrocarbon on the planet. And it's funny that the Saudis have a saying that goes like this. My father rode a camel, I drive a car, my son flies in an airplane, and my grandson will ride a camel. See, the, the Saudis came online here in the 50s. They have missed a whole generation. So they're seeing the 50s, and, and four generations of oil, whereas the United States, because they've had this extra generation, is a five generation cycle. But all we can do as, as citizens are prepare ourselves for, for this type of um, bumpy ride. And I, I really want to tell the audience of teenagers that if we become experts, and I mean real experts, we put in some real time, we will be able to help the Fortune 500 through these turbulent times. And in the beginning, we'll be energy consultants, and then we'll have to work out what it is that our grandsons will be doing because we'll have to have a new plan because now we're off the charts and you know, possibly the monetary, supply, monetary system is gone. So Hubert's Peak, Hubert's World Peak, the most famous oil man in the world. You can't have an oil discussion without him. Here's the world as we see it.